Hi, all of you awesome scuba divers out there. Welcome to Scuba Diving Magazine, your favorite place for the latest scuba diving news and gear reviews. And welcome to Ask Mark, my scuba diving Q&A. Why Mark, former dive instructor, now I'll do my very best to answer your scuba diving questions. Uh, if you do have any scuba diving questions, pop them down in the comment section underneath this video. Use this Ask Mark hashtag in your comment. It just highlights it behind the scenes and then I can I do tend to type out an answer in the meantime so that you do get an answer as soon as possible. Um, but if your question is interesting, uh, then I'll, um, I'll create a, a video to help educate others uh, because chances are someone else has the same question. They're just not confident enough to write it down. Um, and of course, the, the community as well, they do like to answer your questions also uh, to, uh, to give me a helping hand. Um, today, I'm answering a question from Holly about the HSE course. So Holly says, hey there, Mark. Thank you so much for all of your videos so far. I'm going to undertake the HSE scuba course next year at Andark, and I was wondering whether or not you could do a video full of advice from your recent HSE course at Commercial Divers Training, which covers the revision, practical workshop, practical exam, and also the theory exams. Thank you. Uh, yeah, so the first things that come to mind um, is that you don't need a dive computer. Uh, that was a very alien concept for me, um, and learn rope communications as well. Uh, if you can, if you have time early, then um, start learning some rope communications uh, because the, the, it's it's just, it took me a while to, um, to learn and there's a lot of them. Um, it may be different at other schools. Um, as Holly said, I did mine at uh, my HSE course at Commercial Diver Training down in Cornwall, and I did what was called an ECA because of previous experience. But you start off with a, a traditional half mask and a normal like second stage. And the only way, because you're under the water by yourself, you still have a, a lifeline to connect you to the surface. But the only way to communicate with the surface is through bells and pulls on your lifeline. So you have this rope that's attached onto your harness and there's there's pulls so you can pull the rope which is like a, a nice long forceful like a meter long pull and then you get bells which are more of a ding ding and then through sequences of those between the diver and the tender on the surface you can talk to one another which direction to face which way to go uh, whether to come in or to go out and whatnot and yeah it's of course slightly different signals from when it's the tender to the diver and when it's the diver to the tender and yeah you're underwater you're all by yourself and your lifeline just gets a big pull which kind of gets your attention and then you get like two bells or something and then you're like okay right two bells means this and yeah so if you've got time you don't want to be wasting time trying to learn just rope signals um if you can get that done before the course because they're, they're i'm sure they're written down somewhere uh then yeah it just makes your life a lot easier and you can focus on other things as far as practical work uh yeah get your knots down um Definitely bowling, but also um, sort of alpine uh, butterflies and a few other like useful knots because they're probably going to give you a bunch that is best for you to uh, to learn. But you're definitely going to be tying a bowling quite frequently because that's the knot that attaches onto your lifeline. So find a way uh, or find a like a method of tying various useful like diving knots and then stick to it because as soon as you see someone else try and uh, do it in a slightly different way you just get all muddled. So find one way that works for you and you can do it reliably without even thinking. I just stick to it, uh, learn learn those knots. Um, work gloves, get yourself a, a decent pair of work gloves. Uh, I tried using like neoprene gloves. Uh, they, they just suck compared to, uh, to work gloves. You don't really notice the cold when you're doing things under the water. Uh, so a good pair of, um, of like coated um, work gloves like puncture and uh, abrasion resistant work gloves are, uh, are really really useful um, so keep a set or two of those um, to uh, to hand as well as a um, I think they're called quick draws or dog bones I think dog bone is technically that section uh, the whole thing is a quick draw I believe um, you do get like commercial diving specific ones that are used to uh, to hoist divers out of the water um, but this is quite useful for attaching tools to your harness. I know 
carabiner, uh, scary for scuba divers. Um, but yeah, it makes it really useful just to have it a little bit further away because you have quite a lot of stuff going on on your um, on yourself and when you need to get hold of um, tools because they're always attached onto you somehow uh, it's just a little bit nicer if there's a bit more space to uh, to be able to look down and, uh, and actually sort of find what's going on so uh, so a quick draw uh, is always uh, quite useful um, when you're tending on the surface uh, bring a hat uh, a nice uh, nice hat especially when it's uh, when it's cold because chances are you'll be you'll be in the water and then you'll get out of the water uh, you'll you'll stay in your dry suit you'll um, you'll take your uh, your band mask and whatnot off and then it will be next diver swap over and then you're tending so you're still wet and you're just stood there on the surface just holding on to the uh, the lifeline um, and, uh, and just tending that lifeline so as soon as you get out, as soon as you get that off and uh, and everything, uh, just put something on your your head. Just cover your head to uh, to keep your head uh, nice and uh, either warm and dry or protected from the uh, the elements if it's bright and sunny. Um, when you are tending, try not to. Um, I think they call it tender tide, where the the lifeline, especially when it's got communications and then eventually um, uh, hoses on it, gets quite heavy in the water and it almost feels as if the diver is pulling on that uh, on that lifeline to try and get a bit more slack but actually it's just the weight of the line itself or the water movement actually pulling it a little bit and you just end up paying out far too much line and uh, and then they ask you to pull it back in and you realize huh there's actually a lot of line keep that lifeline as neat as possible uh, because it's very easy just to like pull it all back in and then you just got this huge tangle of uh, of line and it, it's just no, just keep it nice and nice and organized uh, pull it in it's like slowly and organized and uh, and keep it nice and tidy otherwise it's just gonna get a mess um, yeah keep things tidy as tidy as possible if you see something that's uh, that's like messy or, or wrong uh, try and just see to it then and there they said that a lot of new candidates especially the younger ones um, they're kind of like not my problem uh, kind of attitude don't be like that obviously just uh, if, if someone especially dive supervisor says oh hey um, that cylinder standing up or whatever yep I want it uh, I'll get it done just kind of be that kind of person where if you see something that needs doing just do it even if it doesn't directly benefit you specifically uh, yeah just help carry cylinders backwards and forwards or whatever it is um, just try and be as, as useful as possible as far as like coursework goes the uh, the days used to go you do all the uh, the diving in the morning and then it was like theory all afternoon uh, so it, it was quite tiring some of the uh, the lectures and whatnot after you've been doing a lot of um, diving do um, uh, sort of take it out of you and you really have to try and keep yourself awake um, the exam questions some of them are needlessly specific to almost catch you out um, I, we had some uh, some foreign students come over to uh, to learn with us uh, because the HSE course is held in such high esteem. Everything's done in English, which is the um, uh, the like maritime language, and um, and yeah, to go through these questions, you you really had to um, be very specific and work out exactly what it was asking. So take your time double check exactly what that question is asking for and uh, yet yeah, some of them are fiendishly um, just awkward uh, to make sure you're, you're understanding exactly what it's asking for. Um, dive tables, you'll go through um, Navy dive tables a lot. Um, they're very similar, well I should say the paddy dive tables are very similar to the, uh, the Navy dive tables um, so if you can go up through like how these function just so that you're like a step ahead and remember to always round up uh, that was always a, um, a thing because it's you, you always go up to like the next pressure group or the next time or whatever um, so if you can go through um, Navy dive tables because your it matters a lot when it goes into your logbook 
because your logbook is um, much more strict compared to just a recreational diving logbook. You don't just write down your depth or your maximum depth. Uh, you have to write down the maximum depth as if it were in the dive table. So it's it it makes sense once you get your head around it, but don't rush to fill out your your logbook. Um, Remember to go through your um, your laws. Uh, so Boyle's law, Charles, Henry, all that. Uh, just just have a, a good like foundational knowledge of all of those. Uh, otherwise, just enjoy yourself. Really, um, I found it really fun. I, at the beginning, I was quite nervous because I didn't really know what to expect. Um, but yeah, just um, just enjoy yourself. It was one of the best courses that I've been on, definitely. Um, and it is interesting to uh, to go over like band masks and all that kind of stuff and learn that side of diving. And um, yeah, yeah, I, I had a great time. I don't know, I don't know how um, Andark do it, um, but commercial diver training they have their um, their own uh, fleet basically. And one of the um, one of the boats was like uh, it was a former liverboard basically. So. Um, so cots and whatnot in that. So you'd you'd sleep, you'd eat there, you'd relax in there, and then on uh, on Humboldt, one of the other boats, they would uh, they would do the lectures in there, and um, and then yeah, they had this whole like training platform in the middle of the uh, Foy River, and um, yeah, that that was great. We did all sorts of different exercises in the water, everything from like surveying the uh, the seabed to uh, to a, um, a ship's rudder and propeller assembly, and yeah, it's some of it can be a bit like tedious where you're just measuring chain links and working your way across. But that's kind of what commercial diving is. So um, so it's more about making sure that you can take these accurate, reliable measurements uh, in the water and, uh, and sort of go through it. But um, yeah, it is a wonderful course. And uh, yeah, if you can, if you are interested in this side of um, uh, like working underwater, yeah, it's a wonderful um, ticket to actually have. But um, yeah, those would be my main um, like recommendations, as it were. Decent work gloves, um, a, um, a quick draw. That's quite useful to, uh, to have around. Practice your knots, because uh, you're gonna be tying knots frequently. Um, yeah otherwise uh, make sure you get a um, a hood that's the correct size uh, you often don't get a choice um, but the very first time i put on a, a band mask it had like a medium hood and i've got quite a big head so uh, so that was quite oh, just on my face and it's just like resting on your cheekbones and you're like oh my god is this what commercial diving is like but then they swapped out the uh, the hood and you're like oh that's much more comfortable um try and if you can, uh, learn some equalizing techniques where you don't pinch your nose. Uh, if you can't equalize without pinching your nose, uh, you can, on the inside of the band mask, there's this little like bridge that, uh, that you kind of plant on your nose and that retracts and goes backwards and forwards, but it's not the easiest. Um, it's, it's easier if you can just uh, yawn and, uh, and equalize on your way down, um, but otherwise, when someone asks for your uh, your pressure underwater, you'll uh, you'll probably have two pressure gauges, uh, one for your bailout and one for your primary, and uh, just secure them both. Get them out in front of you and read them off side by side. It's better to wait like. 30 seconds or however long it is to physically find them because again you've got a lot of stuff like hanging off of you um, and a, a single spg can get a little bit hidden so instead of like replying back oh yeah uh, main gas is 190 uh backup backup gas uh, bailout such and such uh it's better just to go oh yeah main 190 bailout 200 whatever it is um Otherwise, yeah, yeah, as I said, just enjoy yourself. Um, you don't need to dive your dive computer. Uh, your dive supervisor organizes all of that. Uh, when you're ascending, uh, it's just like fist over fist is a good rate. Um, it, it's just nice and slow. And, um, and your dive supervisor will tell you if you're coming up too fast or too slow. Um, and yeah, just... Take, take your time, uh, enjoy everything, and be as, be as helpful as possible. Um, it just makes your life that much um, 
they're much easier and more likely to get a job at the end of it. Yeah, I highly recommend it. Um, I highly recommend uh, Commercial Diver Training. I'll put a link down in the uh, description out, up here so you can check them out. Um, they do a whole range of um, commercial diver training. Uh, they also do commercial work themselves in like a sister company. Um, so all of the equipment is real and current and all of the people there are real, current, up to date. So they know what they're doing and uh, and they they can give you the best um, what you call it, uh, like advice for uh, for getting job in the um, uh, in that work. Um, yeah, yeah, it's um, that's probably my best um, like recommendations or things that I've um, uh, that I picked up from the course. Just enjoy yourself, and if you have any questions, um, just ask them. Uh, they're, they're really, or at least the the, the guys and girls that were um, uh, that were on the course with me. Yeah, wonderful. Um, everybody was uh, was awesome. So uh, yeah, if you have any like queries, you don't understand something, you want them to go over something again, uh, then yeah, they're more than happy to do that. And with the other students as well, we used to just sit around the dinner table, just going through um, uh, yeah the, the course itself and um, and some like f previous past papers and whatnot, um, line signals uh, because yeah, I mean that's that's. Just, all just line signals to uh, to talk to one another under the water. Um, yeah, there, there's a lot that you uh, that you need to learn, but um, yeah, just spend time with the uh, with the other candidates and the uh, the teaching staff, and they should be able to help you out. But yeah, work gloves, decent hat for when you're tending, a, a quick draw, learn your uh, your ropes, your um, uh, your diving laws, your um, uh, U.S. Navy dive tables if you can get that. Um, yeah, that's probably about it. I wouldn't worry too much about it um, as like intimidating as it kind of felt to me at first. Uh, it's no, you, you'll get into a um, uh, into a run and it'll be good fun. Basically, um, tending can be a little bit tedious, um, but hey, yeah, just, just keep track of the uh, the line and uh, and don't keep it taut, but. Don't uh, don't pay out too much slack. Um, but yeah, any uh, any other scuba diving questions? By all means, uh, put them down in the uh, the comment section underneath this video. Use the uh, the Ask Mark hashtag to get featured in up and coming video. Um, otherwise, remember to head over to our website scubadivermag.com. Uh, check out our latest news and gear reviews. Thank you for watching, everybody, and of course, safe diving.